What's up guys, welcome back to Letho's Adventures channel. Uh, my name is Stacy. In this video, I'm going to show you how I restored this old boat uh, from start to finish. It's the boat's called a Stacer Punt. It was built in 1985. I originally made a three part series of me restoring this boat. So what I've done now, I've uh, joined all three videos together and I've made one long video. I have created timestamps below, uh, which allows you to select which part of the video you want to watch. Um, because the video is over an hour long, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it guys. Cheers, bye, peace. So we managed to get the chair off. Here it is, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's off. It's off. It's super rusted. It's been there for a long time. So. Yeah, come. Time to put new bolts. Yeah. That's the front, that's the bow, under the bow. Yeah, good boy. Do the floor as well. <laughs> Nearly finished the sanding. Sanding is quite a mission, but yeah, let me take out these side pieces. Here it is. This is what it looks like so far. I still got a hand sand in the um, small parts, so. The good old hand sand. Okay, I finished most of the sanding inside the boat, so I'm gonna do a bit of the outside now. See how's the inside? Check it out. I still gotta sand with my hand under the small spots here in the small areas, so I'm gonna do the sides now. <laughs> Got most of the sand and done. Only a little bit left. Okay, guys, day three on restoring this boat. Check it out. I've got a, I've got a bit more sand to do, but not much. Yeah. Peace. Hey guys, I'm gonna start filling the boat up with water to uh, see if there's any leaks. So, so uh, what I'll do, I'll fill up with water and then I'll, I'll wait a while and I'll go underneath and I'll see where it's all wet, where it's dripping water. Then I'll just mark the spot, then we can do some welding.
Let's drip, drip over there. I think that's coming from... Yep. I think I found the leak. I think I found one over here. This is where all the silicone was yesterday. I took all the silicone off, but it doesn't seem to be leaking. Oh yeah, over there. Definitely. There and over there. It. That needs to be fixed. Yeah, so um, I finished all the sanding, well, 90, about 95% of the sanding. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wipe the whole boat down with turps and then I'm gonna paint it. Peace. Peace. Paint time. Okay, guys, that's enough painting for today. Until tomorrow. So, there's the undercoat. I still gotta put a bit more on tomorrow, so I'm not finished yet. Cheers, bye. What's up guys, this is another day on doing the boat, so today I'm gonna just touch up some uh, spots I've missed in the inside. Okay, under there I'm gonna just put some primer over there, but then I'm gonna do the outside today. I'm just gonna prime the outside, so it shouldn't take long. Boy. I'm gonna do the, the port side of the boat now. Put some um, primer there, check it out. Basically finished the primer coat. So I primed the outside, the inside. The only part I haven't primed is the bottom of the boat. So what I'll do on the weekend is uh, I take the boat off the trailer and then I tip it over, then I sand the bottom and then I just prime it and then I want to paint the inside white. This is where the um, this is where the bait tank's gonna be, that's where the cooler box is gonna be. I wanna make another a hatch over here and then I'll probably carpet inside here. Then that can be where the anchor lives. Or maybe over there. I'll see. I'm still deciding, I haven't decided yet so. Let's see what happens there. Bye. So um, we're about to do the top coat now of the white paint over there. So I'm gonna do the sides, and maybe do the bottom of the hull over there. I'm gonna use this paint, no glass. It's pretty awesome. Hey guys, I painted the top coat of the white paint. See it and the sides. I haven't done the inside yet. Uh, that was a bit of a flop. It was a bit dirty there. What's up guys? Uh, today I'm just gonna uh, finish up the, the white overcoat inside the boat. So it looks a bit messy now, but at the end when I finish the boat, it'll all work out. Just see what I'm doing. Cheers, bye.
What's up guys? Today we're gonna uh, turn the boat upside down, take it off the trailer, and then we're gonna start working on the bottom. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, so yeah! Okay guys, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and uh, scrape off all the paint as much as possible. I'm not gonna take 100% all the paint off, but um, I'm gonna do the best I can. And then I'm gonna prime it, then I'm gonna put the overcoat over it. I'm gonna fix those holes. I can see there's holes fixed there before. I'm just gonna do a better job. I'm gonna put more putty around. Make it super strong. I'm going to be using a JB Weld to cover the existing um, patches. I'm just gonna do a layer over it. Do another layer. Do a nice mix. Hey guys, so I've decided I'm going to work a double shift. I just want to get this paint job done with this boat so we can start the fun stuff, making the casting deck and all. There we go. Okay, we're back. The battery and flat. Got a new battery in ya. Yeah. Today is the day I finally get to finish painting the bottom of the boat. See, I'm gonna paint it the shadow grey paint I got. It's a two-piece paint, so it's got hardener in it, so I have to wear gloves, because if it gets on my hand, I think I'll need some, some type of like acetone to get off. But yeah, after the paint's dried, I'm going to turn the boat upside down, then all the fun stuff starts. Peace! I've been doing the trailer up, while I've been waiting the paint, for the paint to dry. Check it out. There's some nice wooden blocks there, just to slide the boat on. So I've decided to wear gloves this time because the last time I had this paint in my hand it lasted a whole week. It was stuck on my hands for a whole week, man. Okay, yes, finally finished. So I finished the top coat on the boat. Um, so it's a shadow grey. It's a two-piece marine paint. Um, I did it. It's, the brand is called uh, Norglass. It's pretty awesome. I use the same paints on this boat here. Yeah? Um, it came out pretty good. I hope you guys enjoyed that first part. This next part of the video is all about how I installed the casting deck on the boat. I hope you guys enjoy it. Cheers, bye.
I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to make a tackle box compartment. Yeah, so I'm busy mounting the frame together. Still got a few more holes to drill. That's the floor I made. That's got to go under the, the casting deck. So when I open the hatchet, I can put the valve tank well over there and probably put a cooler box over there. So I'm going to give the frame a bit of an undercoat. I'm going to waterproof it. My plan is to uh, put two really thick coats on here to make it real water resistant. I've actually got a brush and it went in between the cracks as well. I've turned it upside down. I'm just waiting for it to dry a bit, then I'm gonna do the other side again. Okay, so I've finished the casting deck frame. This is what it looks like, see? Put in my cabin there. I might make two hatches over there and uh, use it for electrical. And I might use this area here for electrical. Um, I might just put the battery in there or the battery under here, I'm not too sure yet. But these two here are going to be empty cabins. I'm not going to make a door here anymore. So I've decided I have to come with a bit of a plan to build this casting deck. So maybe I'll just draw something with the measurements. Okay, I've sort of made a plan. I've measured the measured the deck out a bit, and so I've come up with that. Okay, I finished cutting out the casting deck now guys, it came out pretty awesome, check it out. Oh yeah. So cabinet, cabinet, and another cabinet there. And I'm gonna put carpet inside there. See? Looks pretty good. I'm still gonna sand it and waterproof it. That's gonna be the inside. Oh yes. And this one here, this is gonna open from the front part. I can probably put the anchor or something in there. I put a, I put like a wall here so it blocks it off, so it makes it one compartment. <laughs> Let's make a few adjustments on the frame. So I put this piece here. I'm gonna put another piece there to give this part more support. So with this piece here, I'll support this part and this part. See, so it doesn't bend at the end. Finished for the day, this shift is done. I've, I've cut out the casting deck, it came out pretty good. I'm very happy with it. Check it out. So I'm gonna put the, the tackle boxes in here. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna make electrical and put a, 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 a fuse box over here with some wires and some switches. That's gonna open like that. See, there's the covers there. Front row. I might just make another door here so I can um, put the battery and all, that, and all the wire stuff in there, make it an extra compartment. What's up guys, this is another day doing the boat. So today I'm just going to varnish the and waterproof the all the wood. Um, I'm just going to make a few more adjustments. I've got to cut three more cuts, one, two, three, and that's it. Too heavy. Too heavy? Yeah. <laughs> you can make it there. Yeah, I'm gonna put the fish in here and the cooler box in there. I'm busy building up the sides of the casting deck because it's a bit too thin. Let's go! Yeah! Don't kick these extra pieces here. So I've had to extend the sides a bit because I made it a bit, just a little bit too thin. I extended the sides over there so there's no more gap so you can't drop stuff down. Okay, Angela's gonna attempt to jump down the boat. Go! Three, two, one. Oh! That was good. Okay, let's start varnishing the deck. Hey guys, so I'm gonna put the carpet on the back seat of the boat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the, the width and the length of the back seat and then from there I'm going to measure the carpet, I'm going to mark it with uh, chalk, I'm going to put four 
white marks. The mark of the chalk will be like um, the top of the, the bench. And then from there, I'm gonna glue it. Oh, then I'm gonna cut it out. I'm gonna glue it. And then I'm gonna trim it. And then boom! Check it out, it came out pretty awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah, I trimmed the edges very, very nice. Came out pretty good. I want to see what leftover carpet I have because I wouldn't mind doing the floor as well. I want to carpet this. I just look so much better and feel better too. Okay, guys, so. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna lay the casting deck on the material and then I'm gonna mark where I must cut out and where I must glue. Cause I don't wanna put extra glue on it cause it's just gonna waste glue, okay? Yeah? So I've marked the areas now where I'm gonna glue. And so I'm gonna just uh, put some glue there and I'm gonna put some glue on the casting deck I'm gonna wait about 10 minutes and I'm gonna make it flatten. Put pressure on it, make it stick. So now, I'm gonna turn it upside down and then I'm gonna put some uh, weights on it and just let it dry for a while. Let's turn into a lizard, everybody. I'm going to turn to a Komodo dragon, which is invisible. Okay, now I'm going to do the sides now. Hey, guess what? Sides of the carpet. I'm just going to put some staples on the side here. I'm going to wrap the carpet around the sides. I'm going to staple it. Okay guys, I'm about 80% finished with the casting deck. This is what it looks like so far. Um, the glue is busy drying, so I'm just putting some pressure on it. I've stapled the edges. I've wrapped the carpet around. It looks pretty good. Who's that? Um, while I'm building, I'm busy feeding Angelo. For some reason, he's not eating by himself today. Yeah. No. Okay hey guys, I just finished uh, carpeting the, the cupboards, uh, the, the, the hatches, this is for the top of the casting deck. I'm just going to wait for it to dry and turn it around, I'm going to cut it. Okay. That's what it looks like so far. Coming out pretty good. Hey guys, this is um, another day, this is day 10, day 100, I, I forgot what day it is now. Um, I'm doing the boat, so I'm just probably going to finish the casting deck today. I left it over not to, to glue the edges, yeah. So I'm gonna start measuring my carpet out. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start uh, gluing the carpet underneath the bow because uh, when I bought the boat, the original owner didn't do a good job in gluing the carpet there. Um, if you can see in my part one video, you can see me just pulling out the carpet. It was pretty loose, it wasn't, that glue, it wasn't glued that properly, so yeah. So I'm gonna put carpet there and make it all like cushy. So when you're on the boat, you can probably just throw your bags or something there. I've cut one side of the carpet. I've done the port side, now I'm gonna do the starboard side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna turn that around. And there we go, there's a stencil. Woo. Angle piece, put that over here. It's a good fit. Just cut the edges a bit more. I'm just putting some carpet under the hatches so it looks pretty good. 
the steering wheel itself looks a bit neater, not just wood. So there'll be some wood and carpet mixed, you know what I mean? Check it out. I'm just gonna extend some of the insides a bit. So over here, the, uh, the, the, the cabinet's not catching on the side yet, it's actually falling in. So I'm just gonna put a piece of wood going all the way down. Okay guys, this is the exciting time now. Now I'm gonna put the uh, doors on top of the casting deck. So um, what I've got for hinges, I've got these nylon hinges here. These are pretty awesome hinges. So it goes on the top of the of the casting deck. It doesn't go on like the side of the corner. It gives it a nice uh, look. It's a nice uh, fishing boat look as well. Uh, these nylon ones here, I got that for the anchor door. So that's the one right near the bow in the front. And so for these ones here, for these uh, hinges here, I'm gonna use this, the 6G 12 millimeter. And for these uh, hinges that go on top of the um, the doors, I'm gonna use the 8G 18 millimeter. So these screws are a bit long, but the, the head of these screws actually fit perfect into here. And the shop didn't have actually a uh, shorter screw. So it looks like I'll be putting these in the top and then I'll be turning it upside down and grinding it flat because uh, some of the screws gonna stick at the bottom. Check it out. So let's get started. Okay, so I finished mounting the doors onto the casting deck. Check it out. See? So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put handles there so we can open up the doors. My handles are gonna be this uh, nylon strap I got. It's pretty awesome. I, I YouTubed a bit of it and I saw uh, some guys use the nylon strap and it actually works out pretty nice because um, if you stand on it, it's nice and soft when you're standing on the casting deck. Um, check it out, it came out really good, the, the casting deck. This is how I thought it would come out, see? There's a cabinet there. Cabinet there. And in here. And that's really cool. Okay, busy carpeting the floor. This is the section where the um, cooler box and everything's going to be on top of. This is going to be underneath the uh, casting deck. Check it out. Looks pretty good. This is the floor. See? Ah, that looks good. So I've used quite a bit of contact glue on this boat. I've used three liters exactly. Check it out. That's two liters. And there's another liter in there. That is a lot of glue, mate. What's up? Another day on doing the casting deck. So I've actually finished building the deck now. Check it out. Looks pretty good. You see the, another cabinet over there. So my plan is now to, I'm gonna paint all the inside pieces black, all the, uh, the beams inside the boat. It's gonna look nice black. So I'm gonna tape the edges like that and make it look all good. I'm gonna keep these edges here um, a wood color because I kind of like it like that. I'm gonna paint the inside these pieces here black. And that's it. See, peace, bye. I'm just gonna tape these corners here. So I don't need paint on them. I just wanna paint the beams. I don't wanna paint the edges here. So I just finished the first coat of paint. Check it out, it looks pretty awesome. So while the paint's drying, I thought I'd let you know that um, in part three of this video series, I'll be doing all the accessories in the boat. I'll be installing like the um, fish finder and uh, rod holders, and I'll, I'll be doing quite a bit of stuff, putting all the accessories in. I'm gonna carpet the inside, yeah? Carpet the front seat, make it look all nice, because um, the reason why I'm carpeting at it is because over here, these two hatches there, 
I might have electrical stuff there. And so I don't want the electrical stuff to touch the metal because it could short something out and make a fire. So cheers, peace. So I finished building the casting deck. It came out pretty awesome. What I've done, I just weighed it on the way. Uh, it weighed to 25.6 kgs. So this boat is only allowed three people maximum on it and that's about 90 kgs per person. That's including 10 kgs luggage each person. So that's that's round about how the how the boat is doing, how the how the builders measure per adult. So I'm busy doing the um the doors on the casting deck, the doors in the back. So I've decided I'm not gonna mount it on the outside, I'm gonna mount the doors underneath in the inside. On this door on this side here. I'm going to put the switchboard there, see? So the switchboard's got to be in the middle and if the, if the board was mounted on the outside and the deck gets wet, it's got to get water water's got to leak in between the cracks here so I reckon it's best to have it inside so no water's got to leak in between the cracks and wet the wires Okay, so I've done the, the slits, check it out just fits perfect. So I've decided I'm gonna make the door fold upwards and not downwards. Because um gravity is gonna play a big part of this, especially when you're in the water and there's some waves coming. You don't want the door to like fall open like that when you go over a big wave. So you want it to go upwards. If you're wondering what uh, screws and nuts I've been using, nuts and bolts, I have a, a box there, two boxes full of uh, 316 stainless steel uh, nuts and bolts and screws. I only use that for the boat. Uh, I get them from RTM and there's some other RV and boating shop I get from as well. So I just came back from the shop now. I had to get some of these because um, I never had. So these are all my nuts and bolts. Three, 316 stainless steel. So I finally finished the casting deck. Check it out. It came out really good. Yeah, that's, that's where the switchboard's going to be. I'm going to put some wiring under there. Here, put the switchboard there. This is going to be for the tackle boxes or for whatever people want to put in there. And then this is going to be like another little a cupboard. It's all nice and carpeted inside there. It's pretty good. So this is where the uh, cooler box is going to be. That's where the last base wall is going to be. I'm gonna put the electrical stuff in here. I'm thinking of moving the electrical stuff somewhere else. I don't know yet. And this is just the front cabin as well. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that. This next part coming up, this is all about the accessories. I made videos on how I installed all the accessories on the boat. And don't forget there are timestamps below so you can select which accessory you wanna watch being installed. Cheers guys, peace. What's up guys, welcome back. Um, today, well tonight, I'm going to install the rod holders. There's the rod holders there. I've got two rod holders there. It looks pretty good, I just cleaned it up. I'm going to put one there and one over there. And I'm going to use the 316 stainless steel nuts. So I'm busy, I'm busy deciding which uh, washer to go with. I think I might go with the bigger washer. See, so I'm going to use that. Then I'm going to use these, these nuts over there. I've got a pan to make this faster. Get one of this. Let's get this out. Oh yeah, there it is. So instead of screwing it in, I'll just use a electric. Check it out, it came up pretty awesome. Check. Woo! I'll just close that over there. Done, there's a rod holder. That's one rod holder done. Okay guys, there it is. That's uh, two rod holders installed. See? So I've decided I'm gonna make a rod holder on the casting deck. I've got a rod tube and I'm gonna drill a hole there and make it round, big enough so I can fit the tube in and I'm gonna have it that way. So the rod will be sticking out on the left hand side. I'm just busy waterproofing it now. I do it with this uh, marine sealant here, it's pretty awesome. 
I'm gonna put the rod facing this way so it's, it's sort of facing like forward-ish in that direction. It's just so when you when you're casting on the casting deck and you're bait fishing, the, the rod's not gonna get in your way when you're casting with lures. So I have three rod holders in total on the boat. I've got one there, over there, and over there. So I actually uh, went to a boat yard not too long ago and then um, I went looking at boats to get ideas. And so I found this really cool idea. It's really simple. Um, I call it a rod keeper idea. So it's basically, um, I got these uh, canopy loops, these loops here. See, these loops are actually for canopies for cars or boats. These are to uh, like, um, attach the canopy onto the car or the boat so i got two of them one and two while you're traveling with your boat you can actually attach your rod to the boat it's pretty stable man look at that so i don't think your boat your, your rod will, will fly off the boat it's pretty stuck there you can put one or you can put two on it's up to you so cheers bye i just recently got my boat back from kev at brisbane marine wallers check it out he just put a, uh, a new bar in the back of my trailer because that bar was rusting a bit and then I've got a step put in the back of the boat so it's easier to get in and out the boat. So if you need any modifications or welding done to your boat, give Kev a call at Brisbane Marine Wallace. He's an artist of his trade guys, he's really good. There's his logo, there's his number guys. Peace. Hey guys, what's up? It's time to get to the bung part of the, the video. As you can see in video one over there, um, there was lots of silicon around the bung when I took it out and so I found out the reason why that is is because um, there is a dent in the back over here where the bung was put in there's a bit of a dent so that's why the guy put on heaps of silicon so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use JB Wild I'm gonna paste like another wall over here I'm gonna scrape it make it flush and just so I can fill up that that dent you know so there's no leaks so I'm gonna use this JB Wild here. This is my favorite stuff because it's a uh, 3,960 PSI. The PSI stands for pounds per square inch. So this is real strong, this JB Wild. Um, it's good to fill up holes as well in a boat, but uh, nothing beats welding though. Aluminium welding, if you've got holes in a boat, you use aluminium welding as always. But um, after the JB Wild is dried and I've uh, made this wall flush, I'm, I'm still going to put a bit of silicone on just uh, for uh, extra measures so we, we definitely don't get leaks in the boat. So I'm just going to do a 50-50 mix, 50 of the red and 50 of the black. So I'm going to do this part real careful because I can't make a mistake here. That's looking awesome. Check it out. So when that's dry, I'm gonna redraw the holes and I'm gonna remount the bung. Peace. Uh, so the JB Wild has uh, hardened. So what I did, I flattened it a bit because there's a small little lump there. I made it flat with sandpaper. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, put the bung plug in there. I'm gonna draw the two holes because there's two holes over here which I've sealed up. So before I attach this, I'm gonna put silicone on. You buy seahorses and fishes. So after I've bolted it in and everything's uh, strong, I'm gonna put the actual bung in the, the bung plug, put a nice thick layer there. Cause this is gonna be more of like a permanent, looks good. See, it's pretty thick. Okay, so I've left the silicone on. I just wanted to show you how much silicone I put on. I made sure I put on quite a bit so it overflows on the side. So now I know for sure that this, the silicone is blocking all the holes, if there are any holes. So I'll just wipe it down now, make it look clean. I'm gonna put in the bung plug now. So how you do it, you just uh, twist it like that and make it pointy at the end because you can't make it go in like that, it's too uh, wide. So what you do is you just twist it a little bit like that and just push it in, see? And then there, it's done. Okay guys, this is the part when I put the stickers on the boat. So, because this boat is, this, this type of boat, and uh, it is capable of planning, I have to put the sticker on the hull, but I put it on the stern of the hull, and um, the, the stickers have to be 150 millimeters high. So, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna measure the back of the hull, 
from about there to there. I'm gonna mark it at about 23 centimeters from the back. I put the back of the sticker in line with the marking. So I'm gonna do the same the other side, so it's exactly the same. So I only get one chance to do this, and hopefully I do it right the first time. I did clean it up earlier on, I just make sure it's super clean. Okay, there's a the dot over there. 23 centimeters. Looking good. I just gotta apply some pressure here. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat the process. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side now. As you know, I'm a big fan of Shimano. It's my favorite fishing brand. So I've got a nice Shimano stick on my, my boat here. So I'm gonna put this one on the boat too. The other boat, I've got two, so. I think I'm gonna put it over here. Looks cool. Oh man, I'm pretty stoked how this came out. So I put the stickers on. I give you a run around what it looks like. See? There's the registration stickers. Shimano. Woo! Yeah, so I chose white to be the color because um, the stickers have to be the contrast of the color of the hull. So I thought white would stick out more than black because it's supposed to be a dark gray. So it's called a shadow gray. So it came out pretty awesome. Peace. I decided I'm going to put this handle on the boat. Um, so I'm going to put it over here. See? So it's just gotta be a, like a safety type thing. So for example, you're going on the boat, you can hold the handle over here, and then you can hold the outboard there. Hello! What's up? What's up? Okay guys, that's the wrap for today. I started doing this boat late tonight, so I'm just gonna finish up now. So what I've done so far is I put the, um, the side handle on there. That's for when you're sending it on the on the tinny. If you go over a wave, you can just hold on, hold on there, so you don't fall off the boat. I put in the builder's plate now. It's not in the best condition, but at least it's the original builder's plate. I get out and show you. Check it out. Looks like it's been to the wars, but it's the original plate. It still works and you can still read it. Okay, that's the builder's plate done. Check it out. What's up? So I'm gonna mount the Bamini on the gun wall now. I'm gonna put it on the boat. If you don't know what a bimini is, it's a type of roof for a boat, okay? So how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna hold the bimini up with my hands, measure and mark where I'm gonna um, install the, the attachments to attach the bimini on the um, gunwale. I'm gonna install all four of the eyes. The eyes are the, um, the parts where you attach the straps to and you adjust the bimini. So how I'm gonna adjust the bimini is I'm gonna, I'm gonna angle it a bit more forward, more down in an angle, but it's because it compensates for the wind. Yeah, so I've finished mounting the, the bimini on the boat. So I have done it. Um, the mounts for the straps, I've put it on the bow side of the rod holder. And so um, when you're fishing, you can fish from the back as well. If you get a fish, just grab it and you can fish from the back. Because uh, if, if I have the, the strap this side, it's gonna be in the way for fishing, so it's easy access. The boat's looking quite good. I like the color scheme I've done. It's like a, a gray color scheme. Check it out. It looks nice with the Bimini on. Hey guys, so this is the part where I do the, the navigation lights on the boat. So I've got the starboard lights here. I've got the port light over there. So how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna drill two holes. I'm gonna drill one hole there and one hole there. 
So the first hole is going to be for the um, it's going to be for the bolt. The bolt goes through there. See, and the next hole will be for like uh, this part here for the wires. So what happens is the wires go through the next hole, and it's got like an anchor type piece over here. So that goes below the surface. So if something happens, the the navigation light won't turn around. It'll just be firm in its place. It'll be like anchored there, you know. Okay, so I've finished positioning and installing the navigation lights. Check it out. There's a starboard, there's a port. It's nice and separated, so the lights won't overlap. See, that's pretty good. Now, all I have to do now is put the anchor light on. Okay, so it's time to install the anchor light now. So how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna, I'm gonna install it over there near the rod holder. So when you're not using the anchor light, you can just tuck it away like that. And when you're using it, you can just bring it up. See, so by law, you have to see the anchor light 360 degrees around the boat. So it's nice and hard, this anchor light. It's, it's gonna be above my outboard, so it's gonna work out fine. I mean, what I'm gonna use, guys, I'm gonna use these G6 bolts. This is a 316 stainless steel bolts. I've added these washers on as well, just to make the head a bit bigger, because um, this light will be used quite often. So I'll give it more of a grip, because the head will be bigger. So it's just a bit more, a bit more strong, a bit more sturdy. So check it out, that's the light, see, if you're not using it, just leave it down like that, it's out the way, using it, just use it to light like that. I might just actually drill another hole there just to put the wires through, just to make it look neat. I'm going to put a hole over here on the side, then I'm going to silicone it. Okay, so I've finished installing the lights now, I've done the, uh, the two navigation lights, and then I've done the anchor light at the back. So what I'm going to do guys, I'm not going to show you how to do the wiring of the lights in this part of the video. I'm going to put it all together in the electrical section of this video. So if you want to fast forward it, look down below in the timestamp and click on the timestamp that has the electrical section. Peace. Guys, uh, this is how I installed the fish find, okay. I've already installed it. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do the wiring because um, I explained in the electrical part of this video how to do the wiring. Okay, so there's the fish finder there. Uh, it's, a, it's a good little fish finder, it's not a brand new fish finder, I, I got it second hand. So what I did is um, I attached a, a long bolt going through the uh, gun wall here, this is the attachment for the oar. So how I did that is I put a washer there and a washer over there. So the reason I did that is so you can twist it. For example, if you're fishing on the casting deck, you can just twist it like that and then you can watch the, the fish finder while you fish. And if, you, if you're driving the boat, you can just turn like that and it'll face towards you. Then you can see the depth on how deep the water is. Okay, so it's time to install the transducer in the transom. Um, I hate drilling holes in the transom, but I have to do it. So I've decided I'm going to put the transducer just over here by this, um, this stabilizer here. So I'm not going to put it below, just in case it hits sandbanks or whatever. It's not going to rip it off here. So I'm just going to put it just above because the water should come up to about there yeah so it's pretty good here look at the back everything's good how i'm gonna bolt this transducer onto this transom is i'm gonna put a i've got a long 60 mil bolt this is a, a six mil as well so i'm gonna put a washer through there put it through the hole there yeah, then I put another washer in the back. Then I'm gonna put it in the hole up there. Then I'm gonna put a big washer on the back. In between the washers, I'm gonna put um, silicone, so it's gonna be super sealed. Just in case this does bump on the on the sand or something, um, it doesn't uh, start leaking. You know what I mean? So it's going to be super sealed with all the silicone I'm, I'm going to put on. See what I've done? I put heaps of silicone on. See, so it's actually bulging out the sides there as well. It's got a nice thick uh, layer of silicone. See, I've got some there. You can see I left it on just so I can show you how much I put on. You see on the sides there, I'll wipe it away soon. So now we know um, that it's super uh, 
Waterproof. Let's take all that away. So having that other washer um, in between the transducer and the and the transom, um, it does make it a bit flexible as well. It's like sort of like springy. So um, it, it does give a bit of play, which is a good thing, you know. As again, if it had to if it had to move, it's got a bit of shock there. The reason why I attached the transducer more on the left hand side is because I didn't want to attach it close to the middle, because the rotation of the outboard might make will make bubbles here and it could interfere with the transducer, so I put it more to the left. Looks pretty good. Peace. Hey guys, so I'm gonna to explain to you how I install the anchor on the boat, all right? So I bought a 65 millimeter cleat from um, RTM shop. I love going to the shop. And then um, I marked the spot on the, in the front of the bow where I'm gonna install this cleat on. So I've, I've marked the spot, I drilled two holes, because I'm gonna, it's got two nuts and bolts here. And so what I've done then, I've carpeted the front part of the bow with some marine carpet because you want it to be nice or soft, nice and soft and all that. You don't want it to be all hard and let the anchor fall in the bow and chip your paint and all. And I put the anchor in a bucket. I got a special bucket for the anchor. That can either, you can either keep it in a bucket or you can keep it underneath the front of the bow. Okay, so after I, I marked the spots and I drilled the two holes, I measured the marine carpet. Then I cut it out to a really rough, uh, a rough size on how I'm gonna um, install it. And then I put contact glue on the marine carpet and on the front of the bow because I glued the, the marine carpet on the, on the boat. When it dried, I, I glued the carpet on. Then I cut the shape out very neatly on the carpet. And then I installed the cleat back onto the bow. So the cleat is on top of the carpet now, it's nice and tight. And then that's it, it's done, anchor's done. Okay guys, so I'm gonna attempt to fix the outboard. When I first got the outboard, um, it wasn't idling. So it starts up good. It's a good outboard, but it just wasn't idling. So I'm hoping uh, I can fix it just by one turn of the screw. See how I've done it? I've installed it there. I'm hoping it's just gotta be a turn of a screw, then it, then it idles. Okay, so I've tried to start this outboard, I can't do it. So I'm gonna send it to the specialist. I'm gonna send it to Max Marines. Um, he's gonna check it out for me. See? I've tried, I don't know what's wrong with it. It doesn't idle. It was starting when I first got it, but I haven't started it for a while, so maybe it's just uh, blocked or something. Peace. Okay, so I found out the real name for this outboard. It's, it is a Johnson still. It's actually a 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard. It's a Johnson Big Bore. This is a 1993 outboard, so it's it's pretty old, but it, it's still good, you know. Now, since I got it serviced and I got it uh, the carburetor cleaned out and all that, it's got to be even better. So I've got a new leash for the outboard. This is the old one. It's all stretched and it doesn't look good. It's all worn out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece off here, take it off, and I'm gonna attach it here to the new one. What this leash is used for, um, you attach this piece here to this uh, kill switch over there. And you attach the other side here yeah, to your, to your um, life jacket or to a piece of your clothing. And if for some reason you have to fall off the boat, this will pull and it'll pull the switch, the kill switch, like that. And so then the boat will just stop. It's pretty awesome. I had a big accident with a jet ski in the Philippines and this basically saved my life. So. I wouldn't leave without that, so that's a real bonus. It's got a nice new leash, so that's pretty awesome too. I actually have a, a 20 litre fuel tank, check it out. So I've, a, I've got a, a Johnson and even root attachment on both sides, so that works out perfect. And the, the fuel tank actually tucks in nice and neat there in the back. A 20 litre fuel tank for a 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard, that will last quite a while. It's been probably the whole day man, just boating, you know. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Hey guys, welcome to the electrical part of this video. Uh, first of all, I'm not a qualified electrician. I just learned over time. I learned by doing this boat behind me and I learned off YouTube how to do the wiring and stuff on boats. Um, so for example, I'm just gonna use a fish finder slash depth finder as an example how I did the, the wiring on the boat. 
I did everything else the same except the uh, the the navigation lights because I joined them together, and then I joined the cabin lights to the anchor lights. Check it out. I'm gonna show you how I did the wiring on the boat, but first I want to show you this fuse box I got. So instead of the the fuses all light scattered around everywhere all around the boat, I I rather just attach everything into one section. So check it out. So everything runs to this fuse box. So for example, this fuse box is pretty awesome because when the fuse blows. A light comes on here when the light comes on there that means the fuse is gone so that's pretty awesome okay guys so i just want to show you what types of wires i use for the boat all right so um to connect the battery to the fuse box i've used this uh, 25 amp wire okay so i've just taken the battery out of the box so i can just show you how i've done it see the battery actually belongs in there with the lid so i've wired this 25 amp wire all the way to the fuse box so I've wired it to the um, the positive. Or I've wired it to the positive post, and the negative. I've wired it to the negative post. So now the fuse box has power. Okay. So everything else from there, all the other wiring on the boat, I've used this 15 amp wire. So this is this is awesome wire. This stuff, man. So I've connected all the wire to this 15 amp. The wire itself is actually tinted, so it doesn't corrode and stuff. If you use normal wire on salt water. It's just got to corrode, so you have to use marine wire because it's, it's treated. Okay, if you're not sure what amp your accessory is, um, for example, this pump here on my right is a 12 volt pump and it's a 19 watt. So what you do is you divide 19 watts by 12, that equals to 1.58. So that's 1.58 amps. Okay guys, so I got the switchboard for the boat. It's got six switches on it and um, it's, each switch has three pins. So I'm only going to use the two top pins. I'm not going to use a bottom pin because that is looped with a negative wire and so I'm only going to use the two top pins. So the top pin I'm going to wire a positive wire from the, the fuse box to the top pin and the middle pin I'm going to be wiring um, the positive wire from the accessory all the way through the boat to the middle pin. So the top pin is going to be the connection to the um, fuse box. So if a fuse blows I'm going to know it's from that accessory there. Okay guys, so I'm gonna use a fish finder slash depth finder for example how I did the wiring on the boat, okay? So the fish finder is over there. I've installed it already. It already had a, a 3 amp uh, fuse attached to the positive wire. So what I've done, I cut the amp, I cut the fuse off because I want to have all my fuses in one section, which is here, in the fuse box. To make it simple, I drew this real quick diagram on how I did the wiring. I know there's another way of drawing the diagram, I just did, I just did a quick one for you. So how I've done it, the negative wire, which is on the left here, is wire number one. So the negative wire from the fish finder, I've wired through the boat under the gunwale and I've wired it and I attach it to the um, negative post in the um, fuse box. So that's the negative wire done. And then the positive wire from the accessory on my left, that's wire number two. I've actually uh, wired it through the boat. I went through the boat, same with the negative and under the casting deck. And I've actually attached it to the um, switchboard. So I used the the switchboard. I used the uh, middle the middle pin to attach the um, accessory. And then wire number three on my left here, that is actually the uh, wire uh, going from the fuse box to the switchboard. I've attached a positive wire running from the fuse box to the switchboard to the top pin. So that's going to be my connection to the accessory for the fuse. Okay. So the fish finder is actually a three M fuse. I put a 3M fuse over there. So guys, the reason why we have fuses for our accessories on the boat um, is so it's because the fuse protects the circuit from catching on fire. For example, if there's a high or heavy current going through the wires, um, the fuse will blow. See, the fuse will catch it. So if the fuse is too big, like for example, if, a, if the accessory is meant to have a 3M fuse, but you put like a 5M or 10M fuse instead of a 3M, it's pretty dangerous because uh, if there's a high or heavy current going to the wires, the fuse is too big and, and it won't catch the current in time. The time it probably catches the current is when the, f the wires catch on fire when they overheat. So it's really important you have the right size fuse, guys. Peace. Uh, so how I'm going to attach the two navigation lights together uh, is um, the positive wire from both navigation lights. I ran to the boat and I attach both positive wires to the back of the switchboard. So how I attach it to the switchboard is I use the piggyback spade, it's a special accessory which I attached into the middle pin 
so that special piggyback uh, spade accessory allows me to attach two accessories to one switch how did the wiring for the cabin lights is um, I actually attached the cabin light to the, the anchor light because um, by law well if you anchor if you anchored you have to have the anchor light on so all the boats can see you anchored so it just made sense attaching the cabin lights to the anchor light because you wouldn't want to be driving the boat with the cabin lights on because you might get a bit night blind so yeah so what I've done is um, so so both rolls I had I had two five meter rolls of uh, LED lights and each each roll was two amps each so I joined them together that was so that made four amps okay so I rounded off to five amp fuse and so what I did is uh, I made um, a positive wire one positive wire from both accessories uh, both uh, uh, LED lights and so I attached it to the switchboard so how I attach the um, the cabin light to the switchboard guys is I attach the double piggyback spade on the, on the back of a switch so that allowed me to attach two accessories to one switch so what I did I attached the positive wire from the um, the cabin light into the first pin of the piggyback spade and then I attached the, the positive wire from the anchor light into the second pin on the piggyback spade and with the top pin on the switchboard there's still one one more pin left on the top um, I ran a positive wire from the fuse box to the switchboard and I attached it to the top pin what's up guys uh, this is a part of the video when I explain to you and show you how the floor on the boat so what I did is um. I didn't build a floor like I did it with this boat. See, I didn't build one of these floors. I actually just use uh, these rubber mats, these special non-slip rubber mats. Uh, so these rubber mats are good for boats and camping. So what I've done, see, I got the mats. I, I measured in between the beams over there. And then I cut the mats out and I put them together. And then I put them on the floor, see? So the cool thing with having mats like this is um, if you want to clean the boat, you just take the mats out and just wash it. So my plan was to have the floor as low as possible and then I wanted the casting deck to be as high as possible. So there's got to be a low section and a high section. Okay, so the bonus about having a floor so low is I can use the, the underneath of the boat stool. I wanted to utilize as much space as I can. So what I've done, I've put the oars under there, the safety oars, the emergency oars. So if you want to get the oars out, you just uh, put your hand under the boat and get the oars. And you can put other stuff there, like a jackets and all, so it's pretty cool. So that's how I did the floor. It's pretty easy. Peace. Okay, guys, this is a this is the part when I show you how I made the live bait tank. All right, so I finished designing it and building it. I just got to connect it now. So what I've done here is um I've put a, a motor inside. Yeah, this is a submersible motor. When this tank is full of water, it's gonna and, it, and when I turn the motor on, it's gonna suck the water up here through the pipe and go around there and blow it back into the water. So it's just gonna rotate the water and make bubbles and it's gonna put air, oxygen inside of the tank. So, so the fish and the uh, yabby stay alive. And so how I attached it is I uh, I took the back piece of the pump and then um I measured where I'm gonna drill the holes and then I, I drill the holes and then um. I put silicone on each side of the holes and each bolt that I used to attach that piece onto the tank I used two uh, washers on each bolt so one washer on the outside of the tank and one washer on the inside of the tank so I tightened the washers on top of the silicone so when the silicone dries it's got to be water resistant, waterproof so when the motor's running it's not going to leak water out the holes there's, there's got to be no gaps at all okay because um, the washers have sealed the hole along with the silicone Okay guys, so Angelo is starting to learn about snakes. Uh, he wants to tell you something. Tell him boy. So some snakes got venomous, but some snakes got uh, venomous. I forgot. <laughs> this is how it's going to work guys. All right? So the pump I installed inside this bucket is going to suck up water. It's going to go around in this pipe and it's just going to rotate the water and blow bubbles back in. So it's going to keep a, a flow like a river. It's just so I can keep the fish alive or the live bait alive, okay? So that's, that's why it's called a live bait tank, so... So it all looks pretty awesome now, okay? So everything's working in the live bait tank. So how I did the wiring is I did the wiring exactly like I did the uh, fish finder, stash, depth finder. That's how I did the wiring. If you go to the, to the electrical part of the video, you'll see how I did that wiring. Okay, so the amp I used for this uh, little motor, this little submergible motor, I used a 3 amp 
my uh, fuse. So I got my 3M fuse over there. It's that one over there. So that that would be perfect for the motor. So I've decided not to make a pump to pump water in the boat to fill up the tank. Uh, the reason is, is because um, you don't want any accidents to happen. Maybe someone's got to forget to turn the pump off and then the boat's got to get full of water, then you've got to sink. And so what I've decided is um, I'm going to leave that bucket in the boat because that, that's the bucket that's got the anchor on, right? So you've got a bucket in the boat so you can just scoop up water and pour it inside the tank. So that's how you've got to fill the tank up. And to empty it out, this is how you got to do it here. Instead of the um, water rotating in this pipe and going through this one, I'm going to detach this and I'm going to attach it to this pipe here. So this pipe I've actually got running through the boat all the way out the boat here. See? See, so that's the exit there. That's where the water's going to flow out. What's up guys? I've decided I can't finish this boat unless I have drink holders in this boat. I was I was thinking of not putting drink holders, but I, I've decided no, I have to have drink holders. Okay, um, for example, if you're drinking a coke or a soft drink on the boat, uh, you can't put on the casting deck because when you go over waves, it's gonna spill over. I've got these uh, drink holders I got from BCF. It's a it's a blue line drink holder. They're pretty awesome. I use them in this boat here as well. I got four in there, so I use these ones. Yeah, the cool thing about these drink holders is you open it. They all come with a suction cup as well. It's, an, it's another option, you see? So if you don't want to drill holes in your boat, you can just stick it on the side. But I prefer to have it permanently on, so I use screws. So I've decided to use um, these uh, G6 screws. I think it's um, 10, 12 millimeter size screws. And I'm gonna just put three in each drink holder. See, there's the holes there, one, two, three. Um, the cool thing about these drink holders, yeah, is that it's, it's foldable, you see? And when you want to open it up, you just open it up like that. And you can actually adjust it as well. So that's pretty awesome. So I've decided I'm gonna install it on the sides of the boat. See, one this side and one that side. It's because I don't want to have it in the middle of the boat because this is gonna be like the business area. So you're gonna be walking up and down there. Um, you won't be walking up and down the side. So your drinks will be safe over there, you see? So Check it out. The cool thing about these drink holders, yeah, is uh, you can adjust the top piece. See? This is it. This is one. This other one. See? And that's it. That's the drink holder. Woo! Ah, guys, this is a good moment right now. I just realized I've been working on this boat for three months. I've been restoring it, and I've just finished it. It's a good feeling. It feels awesome. Check it out. Woo! Hey. 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 Okay, guys, this is it. Boat is ready. Check it out. Woo! There we go! Got some power! I think we might switch over here. Um, I got the uh, spare outboard here, it's a little water stake outboard. Uh, because I don't know this outboard properly, I'm still new to this one. So I've got an engine over here, so it better be safe than so, you know, safety comes first. Yeah? So I think we've got an angle over here. Okay guys, the boat feels pretty awesome. We're here now, we're fishing. Uh, we haven't caught anything because we've only been here for like 20 minutes, all right? So I'm gonna throw the first cast off the deck. This is the first time um, we've ever fished off this boat. So we're gonna try it out. Angelo is my cameraman. It feels, feels pretty sturdy. It's good. I got it. Find your balance though, it is a small boat. Ok 
Okay, so I got a nine point nine horsepower Johnson outboard. I got my water stack as a backup. I got a twenty uh, two point twenty two and a half liter tank, which is awesome. I got, I got an anchor light. That's if you're fishing at night time. I got rod holders in the back. I got special mat. This is uh, for boating and camping. This mat here. So the reason I put that in is so um, if you want to clean the boat, just take the mat out. It's pretty easy. Then I got the switchboard over here. You see, and then I got the cup holders. There's a the cup holders. I got two of them. Yeah. And then I got the tackle box compartments there. There. I got another little compartment over there. See, there's another another little compartment. I got a, a GPS. That's pretty cool. Um, every time it makes a noise, that's when the fishes are there. They're going up the boat. Angela nearly fell off the boat. I got the rod holders there. I nearly fell. And then I got the live bait well over here. Uh, I'm not using the live bait well because I actually forgot the yabbies in the in the car. So no no live bait well today. I got a little compartment in the front there. You can put your jackets and stuff. This is this is where all the this is where all the um battery is. This is where the fuse box is. See? I'm here. And that's just another compartment there. Put whatever you want there. See? No, I do put stickers. <laughs> no stickers. Then I got this part here. I got navigation lights. I got the Bimini on top there as well. It's actually acting like a, a sail right now. So we're busy sailing. <laughs> Very windy today. So I don't think we'll stay up for long. It might be a bit dangerous later. Um, so yeah, peace. We're going back now. It's pretty windy. Um, I, I realized the outboard is it's not that bad because eh? um, once you get it warmed up, it starts like first or second pull. It's pretty awesome. So I did a really good job at Mark's Marine fixing the outboard. It's pretty choppy now. Boats come past and us small boats have to suffer. <laughs> hey, here we go, he has a wave. Good 90 degrees over the wave. Yeah. Yeah. It just shows you if you're out in the ocean, this boat won't handle man. It's going over those waves. They're not that big those waves and uh, the boat was was like uh, jumping with the water basically, you know? But, Going full throttle. Uh, the boat feels pretty stable. We just have to get used to it. That's all. When you're standing on the casting deck, it's very windy now today. So we got to go back. It's not worth it. It's worth riding the boat though. <laughs> Angela is just tired. He's having a little nap. So back to the garage guys, see you there, bye. Alright oh, guys, I hope you liked the video. Uh, this is the end of the video. Um, it was fun making it. I'm um, finished now with this video series as well. The boat's completed. I'm very happy about it. Um, it did take me a while to make this video, but it's the process of building the boat, yeah? Uh, don't forget to subscribe guys and hit the notification button on top of the subscribe button if you want to get notified every time we post videos. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button. Don't forget to cry. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. And, and hit the notification button. Oh yeah guys and one more thing uh, none of these videos are sponsored we just love making adventure videos and boating videos and so see you in the next video. Cheers bye. <laughs>